Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and a wa very warm welcome to each and every one of you attending this live webinar. Uh, we call this live webinar as a four-in-one informative live webinar because after the end of this live webinar, I'm sure you're going to take back a lot of learning, a lot of informative information, and at the end of the day, you're going to take something very, very, very special and very important if you wish to get into implantology. So here's your host, Ruben Lobo, on behalf of Team Dentist Channel Online, welcoming our expert and a dynamic panel of speakers, starting with Dr. Healy, Dr. Rami, Dr. Sanjay Asnani, and Dr. Vipin. We have a first speaker for this evening, Dr. Rami. Dr. Rami is an international speaker, a leader of postgraduate education for the German Council of Oral Surgery and Implantology. He's a representative and a practitioner based in Germany. We are very privileged to have you, Dr. Rami. Without much further ado, and I, I, I now request you to kindly continue with your live webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ruben, for this introduction. It's a, an honor and we are glad that we are meeting a lot of friends and meeting a lot of students in these difficult times, hoping that we pack them all together and try to uh, exchange our knowledge and science. Um, let me first um, introduce um, our, our council. We are going to try and shortly to explain to you what we are doing. And we are in the German Council of Oral Surgery and Implantology from Germany. Um, today's topics, I want to briefly give you some points, which are who we are and what we do, the umbrella under which we operate, the possible collaboration, the important notes and different modules and our collaboration. We are, were thinking that um, in two years ago, we were thinking that we want to standardize the um, procedure and the science in implantology. That means it's not just um, as simple as it is to put an implant. We wanted to make it as professional and, under, and standardized according to the German rules and German guidelines. So we built the German Council of Oral Surgery and Implantology, to call it briefly GCSI. Uh, like this, we can try to transmit our knowledge and transmit the science we've gained through many years uh, in trying to help the young dentists, the specialists, and everyone who wants to enter the field of dental implantology. We are the German Council was founded to put these standards, not only for the professionals and specialists, but also for starters, just to understand how oral surgery works and how implantology can be done. We put our standards together and our forces to try to build up a curriculum. With this curriculum, you can, if you are doing it step by step, try to get the best for your clinic and for your patient. Um, not only by giving you the knowledge, but also by giving it as a certificate. That means to have a certificate in your hand, which can prove to your patient and prove to yourself that you have um, the knowledge and the experience to put dental implants. This CDI certificate is not only a certificate, but it gives you also the opportunity to be a fellowship with GCSI. GCSI, with this certificate gives you also the option if you want to get more value from a master, to get a master degree from a German university. Master degrees, as you know, can be differentiated into a part-time master or a full-time master. All these two options I will describe later in this um, webinar can be achieved in a certain way and with some benefits if you have the CDI certificate of our council. We, are, we operate under the umbrella of IMC, International Medical College, which is located in Münster in Germany. And IMC is responsible for the accreditation of educational programs. That means, as I told you, we try to put a higher level in the field of dental implantology. Everyone puts implants in a certain way with certain guidelines. But are these guidelines correct? This is what we can, let's say, control with IMC. We and IMC, in the International Medical College, 
are under the umbrella of the German University Duisburg Essen, which is in Duisburg Essen. This is the university which also can give you afterward a master degree, a master of science degree, an MSc, either in full time or in part time. So like this, we are trying to transmit the knowledge worldwide and keeping an outstanding position in the field of dental ophthalmology. Um, of course, having the CDI certificate and giving you the knowledge about this implantology systems and different techniques and clinical approaches um, is for your sake. And it will help you even if you want to get the master with certain benefits in study time and fees. We can, what we, you can imagine, we are, what we are doing now is we are in collaboration with the Indian Academy of Oral Surgery Implantology so that we can make a modular course modules one to six modules over a one year program where you've been educated by many of the best dentists and surgeons in India and in Germany. To, in order to enter the program, you must have a bachelor degree of science and the six modules are done over one year. And of course, as in any course, we will have a written and oral exam. Please don't forget that the first module would be done in India from, with German speakers, well-known German speakers, and the fixed modules will be done in Germany, in the university. The other modules, the second and the fifth module, will be done in India by our partners. You get the competency in dental implantology certificate and the fellowship, and a common certificate of our partners. The fellowship is for three years, and it is limited to three years because you know the field of dental implantology is a field of dynamic. That means it is every month or every two months you have new rules, new techniques, new materials. So this fellowship must be renewed after three years upon certain fees. The benefits which are granted in such a, um, when you have the certificate is that we're trying to put like say some easy steps for the student to get this prestigious um, certificate. Not to forget that the language, study language is only in English, only pure English. We are the only organization giving till now this prestigious fellowship certificate. We are also a scientific partner of the Indian Society of Oral Implantology, which we hope that them will um, find place in Nagpur in this difficult situation. We are also official partner of the Indian Academy of Oral Surgery and Implantology. Let's come a little bit now to the scientific part. So what is the curriculum you are going to take in these six modules? So is it just implantology, how to put an implant? Is it a diagnosis? Implantology starts beginning from planning up to putting a prothesis, which is a crown or a bridge or whatever, ends like that and ending with the follow-up and managing the complication. So as I told you, the first module, which we are talking about will be done by German professors in India. We'll talk about a general introduction in implantology. That means the history of implantology. What is, a what is a dental implant? What are the different implants? What are the indication if you want to choose a patient, how to choose a patient correctly? When are you allowed to put implants and when it is contraindicated? The medical aspect in oral surgery, the overall dangerous anatom anatomical structures, you have to take care and avoid it. Osseointegration in general, primary stability. What is primary stability? What is osseointegration? What's bone quality? What's quantity? What's volume? How to measure them and how to deal with them? Different concepts of implant design. In generally, starting from the patient when he comes till he goes away, how you, um, how you clinically examine him and put a proper treatment planning, which we call here a backward planning. In in addition to hygiene, clinic assistant, and ma managing and marketing dental implants. Please, very important that this module one is done by the Germans in India. They will come from Germany 
to try to get their knowledge there. Module two, which is done from in India by the Indian professors and well-known practitioners, will be module two is the is the digital implantology, which we are talking about from analog from normal X-rays to digital X-rays. How to plan a case? How to take X-rays? How to take digital images? How to translate them? How to be able to work in a two dimension in a and in a three dimension? Um, is it um, fun or is it risky to do it flapless or with flap? Different possibilities of implant insertion in, insertion in the digital planning. Okay. What are the techniques we can use nowadays? Module through three in India two is the heart tissue management. So you can see we are starting from introduction, going to soft tissue management, going to heart tissue management. Heart tissue management will be how to make an incision technique for a bone graft. What are the bone grafts used? From where can I get my bone? Is it better to put a xenograft, a heterograft, an allograft, all these things? The concept of osteointegration on a, on a cellular base, the heart tissue augmentation from A to Z, the, the bone quality and quantity, how to evaluate them, the, um, the management, if you make a sinus lift, if you take bone from the posterior maxilla, the different ways of sinus lift you just mentioned, the direct and the indirect may, the complication, the socket preservation technique, and imp immediate implants. Because immediate implants is a big issue. When to use them, how to use them, what are the requirements, when to load, and when not to load. Soft tissue management, flap reflection, designs, how to do a flap, how to suture a flap, how to make a proper flap, different methods, different suture materials, the indications, the contraindications, the techniques which are used. Periodontally, how to make a, a forcation involvement, how to make it flapless, how to make a mucogingival graft, how to make the surgery in general, the soft tissue management, and how to put implants in the aesthetic zone. And during the webinar today, Dr. Hiller will take about aesthetics, especially just about aesthetics today, so that you can have a glimpse of what we will introduce you in this magnificent course. A single tooth replacement, the crown lengthening, how it is done, how to, how to manage soft tissue complications, dehiscence, how to do a papilla. You can see it's, um, it's a really a very big spectrum of knowledge. Module five, which is very important too, is the prophetics. That means an implant is not done by only putting an implant, but you have to put a crown on it. So how to plan the occlusion, how to manage the prophetic management there, how to make a total tooth replacement, how to make a whole jaw replacement in identitalist cases, the impression techniques, how to make a recall, and how to discuss in the team how the teamwork works, works between the surgeon and the prosthodontics. So to summarize up very quickly is, we're starting from diagnosis to radiographic examination, to heart tissue, to soft tissue, to prosthodontics. The module six will be done in Germany. That means if the student gets all the five modules, the first one from the German professors in India, and then the rest uh, with the academy in India, we'll get in Germany in the six modules where we are talking about more advanced things. That means we are talking about short diameters, short diameters, short diameter, short length, the different loading protocols, the successful implant management, aesthetic implantology in general, and complications. And here we, you can also see the first point, the official German guidelines around implantology. That means when you use these guidelines, you are on the safe side you, that you are doing something standardized. And on the same time, we are will talking about the exam, train for the exam, because a written exam will be done, an oral exam will be done on the cases you have done in the clinical part. And if everything goes fine, which I'm pretty sure of, you will get the CDI certificate, the competence in dental implantology and the fellowship. Here, a small comparison on the left side, you can see this is the normal master program. If you going to introduce in Germany doing a master program and on the right side, it is the program you 
get if you get the CDI certificate, the advantages you get. Of course, with the CDI certificate, it's a one year program. So you already, you already have the language and you, you have the knowledge. So like this, the, you can spare part by going to Germany only two times during the master degrees instead of three times. That means the duration eight months in both cases here with the CDI certificate, you have to come two times to Germany instead of three times. Um, excuse me. Um, of course, how to register in the master degree when you have the CDI certificate and you have the basis and knowledge and we, we what we can assure with this certificate. In this case, um, the admission is done by us, GCSI, and we guarantee for you a place to get in the master of program in Germany in Duisburg. We are glad to announce today um, the launch of the Indian Academy of Oral Surgeon Implantology. It is really an honor for us to be with the IAOSI. And in the same time that we launch, launch our collaboration with IAOSI, and to, that we try together to, to make the best for the students, for the delegates, the experienced one, the starters. So please don't hesitate to contact us at any time. Here are our email addresses and all information you can also see on our website. Thank you very much for listening and I hope uh, it was not too, too much for you. Thank you. Thank you, Ruben. Congratulations, sir. Congratulations to the entire team on the successful announcement of the course. I'm sure everyone's going to make the best use of this course. And thank you very much, Dr. Rami, for giving us an insight on the German Council of Oral Surgery and Implantology. Up next, we have Dr. Vipin Dehane, who's going to give you an insight on the Indian Academy of Oral Surgery and Implantology. A, a little bit about Dr. Vipin. Before that, I would like to request Dr. Vipin to kindly start with his presentation. Thank you very much. I guess the presentation's on. Before that, I'd like to quickly tell you about Dr. Vipin Dehane. Dr. Vipin Dehane is a well-known oral and maxillofacial surgeon based in Nagpur, Maharashtra. He's a fellow of the prestigious Nobel Biocare and the Ostam Implant System. He's been a junior consultant at the Jubilee Mission Medical College and Research Institute, Kerala, India. He was a fellow at the GSR Institute of Cleft and Craniofacial Surgery, Hyderabad, India. He's also been a reader and an associate professor at Saraswati Dental College based in Nasik, Maharashtra. He was in head and neck oncology training in Nagpur. He's been a consultant and currently is a director of Apple Dental Clinic and Facial Surgery Unit and Implant Laser Unit, Nagpur, Maharashtra. Thank you very much, Dr. Vipin, for joining us. Without much further ado, and I, I now request you to kindly give us an insight on the Indian Academy of Oral Surgery and Implantology. Thank you. Good evening, all of you. I welcome you all on behalf of Indian Academy of Oral Surgery and Implantology in collaboration with JCSI and INC. Uh, I will give you a brief history regarding this Indian Academy of Oral Surgery and Implantology. Uh, this was an effort of my colleague, Dr. Sanjay Asnani. Uh, we are practicing together since 2009. We are working together in implantology. Uh, he is my colleague, guide, friend, and as a big brother also. <laughs> this was his brain. Uh, he was his uh, dream to start some academy a few years back. Uh, we discussed many times to start an academy. Uh, recently, a few, one year back, we started, we planned to start the Indian Academy of Oral Surgery and Implantology. And we started contacting various uh, institutes all over the, in, all over the world. Uh, later in, uh, I guess in August to September, we, we had contacted with Mr. Rami and we got a collaboration with the GCSI. Uh, already you, had you, had, you know the brief about the GSI. It's a government state university there. And uh, Dr. Hill is working there for many years. And he is the well-known uh, implantologist along with Mr. Dr. Rami. Uh, we have a two head office. This is my team. We have a good session in Germany in Frankfurt in the month of February before COVID era. <laughs> Luckily, we will bless uh, non-COVID. Yeah, uh, we have a collaboration with GCSI as well as IMC. Uh, it's an international medical college. It's a state government college uh, in the Germany for international fellows all over the world. 
uh, we have a two head office one is imc munster germany where we have a last module uh, and the convocation also and the first module uh, which will be taken care by the kingsley hospital nagpur kingsley hospital is one of the biggest hospital in nagpur recently started in the month of december one of my colleague is promoted director there so he has insisted me to start this uh, project in his in his uh, hospital uh, there they have started with the uh, institute of dental sciences they started with multiple courses in endodontics and this this one is the uh, fourth course to start on implantology uh, uh, uh this hospital kingsley hospital is a uh, uh, having a various uh, infrastructures like cat cam uh, cbct machines well equipped chairs they have a discussion area for our classes this is the discussion area we have a good auditorium there in the kingsley hospital where we are planning to take the combined combined lectures for all the post graduate for the gci all over the india which will be supposed to be in the uh, 2021 after this covid era uh, we had a few centers all over the world or oh, sorry all over the maharashtra of, of uh, indian academy of implant uh, oral surgeon implantology one of the center is in fortis mumbai nagpur it's in washi Uh, it is also governed by one of my friend, Dr. Arun Thakur. We have another center as Aurangabad. Dr. Dasta is taking care for that. He is also having his CAT CAM machine there, and he is well-known prosthodontist as well as he is having an in-house lab there, as for well, as well as a commercial lab. Recently, we had uh, done a collaboration of GCSI with the ISI 2020 conference Nagpur. Uh, so the GSI GSI speakers are the knowledge partners for our conference. It's a it's a opportunity for us also, and uh, this is the first time we are uh, we are organizing a national conference on implantology in Nagpur. Uh, this conference was in the month of September 2020, but we are planning to postpone this conference due to this COVID pandemic. Uh, thank you very much. Again, also we have uh, please do attend and do register for the ISI 2020 conference in Nagpur. It's the 27th National Conference on in, of Indian Society of Oral Implantologists on Dental Implants. This ISY 2020 as a collaboration with DDS, that is Digital Dentistry Society, also the CAI Academy. It's a computerized ed implantology academy, and of course the GCSI, which is the, our also partners. Thank you very much. This is a contact area, head office of the Kingsley Hospital, along with the website and the contact number. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Doctor Vipin. Thank you yeah. for sharing an insight on the Indian Academy of Oral Surgery and Implantology. Up next, we have Doctor Sanjay Asnani, who would be talking on the topic precautions to be taken for implant and oral surgery post COVID nineteen. A, a little bit about Doctor Sanjay. Doctor Sanjay uh, is a BDS gold medalist and an MDS in oral and maxillofacial surgery. He is a diplomat of the World Congress of Oral Implantologists, Japan. He has a fellowship in sleep medicine (PMD) from Roseman University, United States of America. He is a fellow of the Indian Society of Oral Implantologists. He is trained in implantology at the University of Buffalo, United States of America. Currently, he is also the director of CIA Academy, Italy. Thank you very much, Dr. Sanjay. I now request you to kindly continue with your session. Thank you, Robin, for the introduction, and thank you, Dr. Rami and Dr. Vipin, for introducing GCSI and IOSI. So today we are officially launching our academy. So the first two lectures were a brief introduction about the certification and the courses which we are going to conduct in the coming, say, next year or by this year, and we will be going to start our first batch. So today's topic is so let's move to something scientific. It's like uh, one second, yeah. So uh, friends, as you know that we are. fighting with an invisible enemy that is corona since last four four months four five months and it all started in china as you know in month of november but it was declared as a pandemic and the world came to know in the in the month of january till that time it was too late and it has spread to many countries because the travels were on so all the countries got infected and so as you can see as of today that whole world is on the knees because of this small tiny A dead thing, you know. So the first, this is the first time where the battle is not being fought on the fronts, on the borders. The battle is being is being fought in the hospitals. Okay, 
and this is the first time the, the soldiers are the doctors okay so we are we are fighting against this deadly virus and protecting our whole society against this virus so that everybody is safe we are exposing ourselves to this deadly virus without the fear of getting ourselves infected so the enemy is new and strong and we all know that it um, it's, it's 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 a gift from china to all of us so if you see uh, it started in china but then they overlooked the consequences and uh, the warnings which were given by their own doctors okay so but uh, in 20 january 2020 they suspended all the dental works and only emergency procedures were allowed to uh, conduct with the help of uh, all the protections and uh, the ppes so as we all know the dentistry we and aerosols go hand in hand okay the production of airborne material during dental practices is not new and we during our each and every procedure we produce aerosols uh, splatters and blood contaminations everything so it's a routine thing for us until today we were working with with the help of only a three ply mask okay because we were not fear about getting the viral infections and the corona was not there but believe me friends uh, post covid everything is going to change we need to protect ourselves first okay as a dental surgeons we need to take care of our staff ourselves and our patients so that we don't spread the infections from we don't uh, do a cross infection right so as we all know that it, corona can spread through droplets and aerosols and it's becoming a, a critical concern day by day for dental surgeons because it it's a, a, a generation of aerosol droplets with the with the patients and even in the if the uh, blood is blood during the dental procedures so how does it spread okay if an infected patient comes patient comes to your clinic first he'll come in direct contact with your staff or then he will come in contact with you okay then from you it will spread to another patient if you don't take precautions so this is how an infected patient can infect a lot of people and dental clinics can be like a hot spot for a spread of corona okay if you don't take precautions uh how are the aerosols generated in our clinic as we all know we are using high speed hand pieces ultrasonic scalers and we do a lot of implant surgeries we do maxillofacial surgeries and so uh, scalings and also in our day to day practice like a lot of aerosols are generated in our clinic which are there in our operatory room okay but they settle over a period of time and we do, we are not we are not scared before this okay but then uh post covid a lot of things are going to change okay so during this outbreak it's a moral duty to reduce the routine dental procedures because of fear of spreading the virus so these are just a patient selection guidelines lot of things have been told about that how to select the patient have a telephonic conversation train your staff for history taking i'll not go into all these details i'll focus only on disinfection protocol to be used during the implant surgery and the uh, oral surgery procedure so if you suspect a corona patient send him for a testing okay on arrival ask the patient to remove the shoes and uh, ask to wear the shoe covers strict hand sanitization protocol to be followed at the entrance temperature monitoring okay social distancing to be maintained at the clinic okay we'll rush through this uh, all the objects which are frequently being touched uh, should be covered with uh, uh, sterile uh, wrappers and should be disinfected from time to time uh, work strictly by appointments have small number of patients in the waiting no attendance allowed unless the patient is a child or an uh, geriatric patient okay so work strictly by appointments with social distancing Pro- waiting area protocol again convert your clinic to a paperless clinic use lot of digital options use dental softwares use digital prescriptions no magazines no newspapers in the waiting area for obvious reason that we cannot disinfect them from time to time so it can act as a source of infection so convert your clinic to a digital clinic okay uh disinfect the waiting area twice a day uh, floor mopping with warm water detergents you can use sodium hypochlorite 1% or hypochlorous acid which is available okay disinfectant of door handles knobs which are frequently uh, used and should be done with spray after every patient okay so now we come to an important aspect of this presentation that is operatory area protocol what precautions you need to take once the patient enters from a, a visiting uh, area to your operatory area the first thing you need to do is the follow the high hand hygiene protocol ask the patient to perform the protocol again when he enters the clinic uh, second is you yourself perform the scrub a small video which i am going to present uh, for you can be done uh, i'll mute the sound because it is self explanatory okay take the scrub in your palms okay 
It's a 20 to 30 second protocol, which everybody needs to be strictly followed. You, your assistant should follow. <clears throat> First, rub your palms, then your uh, webs of your fingers, okay? So this is how you should proceed with the scrubbing. All the areas of your hand should be properly scrubbed. Your, uh, it should be free from all the uh, disinfectant from the virus and all the uh, bacteria. Your nail beds, your nail beds, your fingertips, everything. So once this is done, your thumbs be properly scrubbed. Then your right hand. So various disinfectants and scrubs are available in the market. We'll speak, we'll talk to talk about it in the uh, in our next slides. This is just a video presentation. So once this is done, your then your okay. So this is how you do your hand sanitization. Okay. Then next is wearing of PPE. PP. So this is a personal protection equipment which you should have in your clinic if you are doing a lot of uh, say surgical procedures because aerosols are generated as I have already told. So what kind of PPE should be used by whom? Your, your uh, receptionist should can use a basic PPE kit without a face shield because he's not going to come into directly contact with the patients. You'll be only in the reception area, but you, you yourself and your assistant should have a good PPE which is about 70 GSM to 90 GSM and what all a PP should have, okay, it should cover your everything from head to toe. It should have goggles. It should have a face shield. It should have a three-ply mask, an N95 mask, surgical gloves, and your shoe covers, okay? So everything has a specific reason, like, okay, a PP should be, don't don't uh, purchase a cheap PP. It has certain guidelines which have been given by WHO, okay? A PP should be non-permeable to your blood, your urine, saliva, your water, everything. Your face shield protects you from the sudden splash from your aerators and your scalers and aerosols. Okay, so uh, select a good PP. Your second, your first assistant should have the same PP. And nowadays the, the practice is going to change. It will shift to a 600 dentistry. Okay, so you'll have two assistants in your operatory area. So second assistant can have a PP without the face shield because anyways, that assistant is not going to come into directly contact with the patient, okay. So uh, two assistants and you yourself. So three people will be there and a patient in the operatory area. Uh, which type of mask you should use? Okay. Normally we are using a three-ply mask, which is sufficient to protect us from a routine like regular bacteria and from it's, it's perme impermeable to all the fluids. But in this COVID era, uh, you should have a respiratory mask, uh, N95 mask with a respirator or without respirator, which will, which will filter all the viruses and bacteria. It, will, it is impermeable to all the fluids. And it has a very good airtight fit. So your personal protection is very important. So don't go for a three-ply mask, but select an N95 mask. Okay. So before the patient sits on the chair, make sure that you disinfect the chair properly. You remove, you clean it, you wipe it with the mops. Okay. Once this is done, keep, keep your clinical operatory area free of uh, clutters. Okay. Improve air circulation and avoid air conditioner. It's a very controversial thing whether to use an air conditioner or not. Some people say that air conditioner should have an HEPA filter, which is not possible. Okay. And without air condition, you cannot work for a long time with a, with, with a PPE. Okay. So you will set sweat a lot. So it's a controversial thing, but again, yes, uh, it's a personal choice. Uh, use 0.1% sodium hypochlorite for disinfectant of dental water lines. Okay. Then comes your wearing of PPE, how you wear the PPE for the assistant and dental surgeon. So once a patient is seated on the dental chair, first thing you need to do is tell the patient to do goggles with uh, H2O2 and uh, povidine iodine solution. This will help to reduce the bacterial and viral load in the mouth on the oral cavity. Once this is done, do a proper painting and draping of the patient. Arrange your instruments properly. Your assistant and you should arrange all. You should uh, remove the instrument from the packet. Your trolley should be covered with disposable and autoclavable covers. Your patient should be draped properly. Your suction should be in position. Okay. So once this is done, once your treatment is done, how to reduce the aerosols in the operatory room? Okay, so this is a big concern nowadays. Till day, till today, we were working without all these protocols, but now you need to take care because aerosols are harmful. As you know, virus can, you can get infected through aerosols. So how will you reduce this, these? Okay, 
there are four ways one is use of hepa head air filters second is ultraviolet germicidal uh, irradiations and ventilation third is disinfectant and defogging and natural ventilation okay we'll see one by one first of all your air flow circulation the air flow must be planned in such a way that to facilitate it should clear all the contaminated aerosols from the dental operatory so your clinic should be very well ventilated and a minimum of six exchange of air cycles per hour should be followed okay per hour so it is recommended to use a stand alone hepa 13 or hepa 14 air filter in the dental operatory i'll show you a demo of that uh, avoid air conditioners if you're not having inbuilt hepa filters as i said earlier use natural natural ventilation introduce ad additional positive air flow less contaminations so that your your area is not contaminated okay use of table fans and exhaust fans okay so air must be drawn into the room from outside okay you should have a fresh air it should flow from a less contaminated zone that is the dentist towards the more contaminated zone that is the patient and from there it must be exhausted from the contaminated zone that is the patient to the external environment or recirculated through the hepa filters for this you require a good ventilated clinic okay so if you are working on a patient and if you don't have a hepa filter clinic it is mainly protocol followed in major ot's but in dental clinic it is not possible to have so this is a solution you can have an extra oral suction which has an inbuilt hepa filter it reduces a lot of aerosols and your area will not be contaminated a short demo how these uh, filters work okay of course you need an extra intraoral suction or hyo suction but also if you have this it will reduce the uh, aerosols lot uh, to a lot of extent okay it has a minimum voice of course it's a costly equipment it's a personal choice whether to have this or not but then who has laid down some protocols that you should have uh, a suction extraoral suction this is how it works so it sucks all the uh, all the aerosols and everything right again it's a personal choice second is ozonization like generating ozone ions in the clinic okay which will which are highly reactive and when they come in contact with the microorganisms they react and make them harmless but then again it's not possible in routine dental clinics because the amount of ozone gas which is required to destroy these pathogens is volume is quite large and it will be very risky for the dental professionals and the patients okay third is ionization this is like a, a concept which is developed by our it's a make in india concept this generator has been developed in pune okay it changes it generates a negative ion okay and these uh, negative ions the microorganisms organisms which are generated through aerosols they are floating in the air okay they attract these negative ions and become heavier as a result of and they precipitate and fall onto the ground okay they succumb but using this is not sufficient again you you have to disinfect the area third is ultraviolet radiation you should have a uv lights which uh, help in killing the virus so these are the four things now the question comes whether you should fumigate or you should use a fogger okay so what is a fumigation it is an old, old tradition which is used in a lot of hospitals and operation theaters uh, it's it generates gases which kill the microorganisms and bacteria okay the contents which are used is formaldehyde plus uh, potassium permanganate which gives rise to fumes which are effective in killing the bacteria virus fungi and their spores so this is the most effective way of controlling the contamination but it has some disadvantages formaldehyde as we all know it's, it has a carcinogenic effect it irritates to the eyes and the nose it causes dizziness causes nausea and after you uh, after fumigation there's a protocol which is to be followed you cannot go inside and work immediately the area should be defogged at least for 3 to 4 hours to remove all the fumes from the operatory area okay so you require an air handling unit which is to be run for few hours post fumigation and also mopping and cleaning of the area is needed post fumigation to remove the residue also you have to cover the uh, few uh, like rubber uh, surfaces your laptops your computers need to be covered with a cloth so that it doesn't get uh, damaged okay and what is fogging uh, fogging is like it uh, when you, it, it uses a mixture of hydrogen peroxide and silver ions which is commonly used and it generates aerosols in the controlled area so when you use a fogger it creates a mist and produces a mist and it generates aerosol the micron size is around 10 microns and it it spreads in the 
a whole operatory area. It's safe to use, no need of an uh, air controlling unit. Okay. The residues which are generated, they settle and decompose in air with water and nascent oxygen. So it is very safe, it is not harmful. So what are disinfectants which are commonly used? I prefer, I use this from like these products from uh, Microgen, these are good products. D125, they have a disinfectant, they have uh, surface sprays, they have mops. Another product which I came across is uh, sodium dichloro, sorry, <coughs> dichloro iso uh, cy cyanurate tablets. These are like chlorine based tablets, okay. Uh, Last week, I was seeing a video from Dr. Park, who is the CEO of Megagen Implants. In Korea, they are using this on a large scale. The concept is like they are using hydrochlorous acid over there that can be used as a disinfectant for sanitizing, for fogging, everything they are using everywhere. But here, like the hydrochlorous acid is available, but it's very costly. And it's available in the liquid form and it is not stable. So what is an alternative for that? The tablet is available. Okay. So this dissolves in water, produces hypochlorous acid, which is most effective disinfectant in the chlorine family available in dilute solution. It is safer, safer than sodium hypochlorite. It is more potent than hypochlorite. Okay. And it penetrates faster in the cell wall, reacts rapidly to oxidation, oxidation reaction with the organic matter, which is the critical component of the microbial cells. Okay. Suitable for high, low and intermediate disinfection. And it is effective against all. Uh, against vegetative, back, vegetative bacteria, fungi, virus, and bacterial spores. WHO strongly recommends the use of this in the COVID era. It's not very costly. The tablet of 500 milligram is costing around, around say, 5 rupees. So per day cost comes to around, say, 30 to 40 rupees, 30 rupees per day if you're using it for everything, like for disinfectant, for floor mopping, everything, <clears throat> for instruments cleaning. So what is how it should be used? So if you're using as a surface disinfectant, then dissolve one tablet per 200 ml to prepare a powerful disinfectant solution. Use this solution to spray, wipe, mop, rinse the area or the surface. And the prepared solution remains active for 24 hours. So a fresh solution has to be prepared daily, but it is not costly as I said, hardly <coughs> 20, 30 rupees per day, it's not a big cost. If you are using, planning to use it as a hand sanitizer, then one tablet in 500 ml of water, spray on the hands, rub them and let it, let it dry, okay. Another product is D125. It's a third generation twin chain cotton ammonium compound. It is tested and documented by major private hospitals and government authorized establishments. It is approved, it's FDA approved, and it, it acts on, on the variety of, say, virus, bacteria, fungi, everything. So you can use it as a disinfectant. Okay. So aerosols, it can be used as a fogger, used in the fogging machine. Okay. The quantity required is just 15 ml per one liter and it, it should be left for around 20 minutes and allowed to settle. So once it is done, after 25 minutes, you can enter the operatory area and start using the operatory area. Next product is this one, which is used for like saliva ejectors, your vacuum suctions, your hand pieces. Again, it's a very good product. Totally, the, how you should use it, like you should immerse, you should immerse, immerse the instruments in the solution and cover it and leave it for 20 to 30 minutes to achieve the complete micro, uh, com, com, complete effectiveness. So now comes how you will sterilize the instrument. There's a protocol which has to be followed, the de decontamination cycle. Okay, first is after the use of the instruments, your assistant should clean all the instruments, should pick up all the instruments with PPE still worn on, should not remove the PPE, clean the instrument. Second is disinfection of instruments, inspection, whether any blood or still some uh, saliva is remaining on that. Okay, packing of the instruments, sterilization, transport to the storage area and again use. Okay, so complete cycle has to be followed. We'll see one by one. So as soon as the procedure is over, you need to clean the instruments thoroughly under running tap water. And like uh, the instruments like forceps and all can be cleaned with the brush with soap water. After cleaning is done, you need to dry the instruments and leave it in a tray with a disinfectant for 20 to 30 minutes. Okay, so once this is done, you switch on to ultrasonic, scale, ultrasonic uh, cleaner. After ultrasonic cycle is done, you pack the instruments properly in the pouches. Okay, the packed instruments are kept, again repacked in the, with the help of tapes and gowns. Then they are shipped, traveled, carried to the sterilization zone. You should use a B-class autoclave, any autoclave, but I'll recommend a B-class autoclave because it is vacuum free and 
uh, you have a dry cycle index. So you don't get instruments wet and 100% sterilization is assured with the B-class autoclave. Once this is done, you need to store the instruments so that they can be reused after a certain period of time when it is required. Then most difficult, most important is like how to discard a PPE. Like there are news that many people are getting infected even after using PPE. Why? Because there's a, I don't know why, what is the reason, but it might be that they're not following the protocol how to discard a PPE. Okay, so it should be properly discarded. A small video, well, which I'll run through very fast because we are running short of time. Okay, so uh, the PPE has to be discarded properly. Okay, we'll see, we'll not see from the start, but just skip this yeah so yeah so once the procedure is done you need to do the high hand hygiene protocol you need to follow that again okay once that is done you you get a pp back which is there your assistant will again clean the chair mop it again for ready for the next patient okay Then again, follow hand hygiene protocol. Remove first pair of gloves. Remove your face shield, discard it. Again, hand hygiene protocol has to be followed. Remove the gown in such a way that you don't touch your inner uh, clothings. Properly wrapped, again a high hygiene protocol, sanitizer to be used, remove your glasses, your mask to be discarded. Again, the protocol has to be followed. So you need to use a lot of sanitizers, you know. It is to be wrapped properly, and there's a bag which is available along with the PP. You need to put that in the bag, yellow bag, pack it properly. And then your finally your second pair of gloves should, gloves should be removed. Your hand should be washed properly. So this is how you discard PP. Uh, proper management of disposables is very important during this period because you will collect a lot of uh, uh, PPs. Like if you are doing, if you have a good practice, you you might you might discard four to five PPs per day. Five PP, yours and uh, assistant. So ten per personal protection kits. They need to be discarded daily. So you need to talk with the waste management team so that they can come to your clinic and collect the waste daily on daily basis. Okay, so what to do in this lockdown period? Maybe another 15 days or 20 days of lockdown are remaining. I'll suggest you to be positive, stay positive, think positive, meditate yourself, boost your immune system, have healthy food, have things which will boost your immune system, stay away from people who pass negativity. Okay, stay away from those people. Okay, just Focus on one thing that this is going to get over in some days. Okay, it's just a matter of say three, four weeks, and again you will be back on track. So think, be positive. Okay, until then, enjoy Corona. Thank you. Thank you, Ruben. Ruben, are you there? Thank you very much, sir, for the excellent presentation. It was so nice of you for, for sharing us the precautions to be taken for implant and oral surgery post COVID-19. Now we have a very prolific speaker from Germany. He is Dr. Roland. Dr. Roland is a dental implantology specialist based in Germany. He has a Master of Oral Medicine in Implantology and a Master of Science in Implantology and Dental Surgery. He's a diplomat of the ICOI. He's a forensic dental expert. He's an honorary member of the German Association of Oral Implantology and is also a scientific leader of the German Council of Oral Surgery and Implantology. He's a representative of Foreign Affairs at the International Medical College, IMC. Today, Dr. Roland is going to speak on the topic, The Way to Aesthetic Success, guidelines and risk, risk factors for achieving an aesthetic outcome. Thank you, Dr. Roland, for joining us. I now request you to kindly begin with your presentation. 
Yes, thank you very much to all the speakers before, and especially for the very interesting lecture of COVID-19. Dear colleagues, good afternoon and warm regards from Germany to India. Today, I was asked to make a lecture about aesthetic implantology today. This lecture can be only a cutout because I have only limited time. So it's not working. I can't scroll. So can you please scroll to the next slide? Yes, it's not possible. Oh, oh, hold on, sir, just a second. Sadiq? No, it's not possible. I stop it and try it again. Yes, please, sir. That would be better. Please share your screen once again. Share screen. Okay, now it's working. Perfect. Implantology in the aesthetic zone is one of the biggest challenges in all implantology. It is much more than drilling a hole into the bone. The complexity of analysis and planning take much more time than doing the surgery. Especially in the aesthetic zone, we have normally only one chance to insert the implant into the best three-dimensional position. So could you please share your screen? Uh, participants cannot see your screen. Okay. I, yes, sir. I, share I, screen. There's a green arrow there. If you can see your green arrow down. Your participants are requested to kindly hold on for a moment. Thank you very much. Roland, du musst den Bildschirm freigeben. Unten, ganz unten. Bildschirm freigeben. Ja, da habe ich aber keine Möglichkeit dran. Ich habe hier, wo muss ich das denn machen? Bildschirm freigeben. Oh, was ist denn jetzt passiert? Wo ist denn Bildschirm freigeben, Rami? Can you see the slide now? Oh, so? Can Not yet. Is it okay now? Not yet, so? Okay. Have you shared your screen, so? Yes, I did. Okay. Bildschirm freigeben. Ja, wo finde ich das denn, Rami? Ganz am Anfang, wie du es ganz am Anfang gemacht hast. Ganz, ganz am Anfang, ganz unten. Neben den, Te äh, neben den Teilnehmern und diesem Chat. Bildschirm freigeben. Das habe ich aber gemacht. Ich gehe noch mal raus. Nee, du hast es gestoppt und jetzt musst du es noch mal freigeben. Ich auf Bildschirm freigeben. Ja. Okay. Jetzt habe ich aber überhaupt keine. Jetzt habe ich überhaupt keine PowerPoint mehr. Hello, sir. Is it okay now? Hello. Siddiq, can you please uh, give the instructions? Thank you very much. Can you see the slides now? No, no sir. sir. We cannot still see the slides. The have you, have you bottom minimized? Of, bottom of your screen, there is a green color button yes, called I, share I, screen. Yes, I, I did it. Yeah, you did it. No? Yeah. I did it. Then if, if you did, just stop it again, you can reshare it. Sir. Just do stop, stop sharing. Stop sharing. I Part don't. Participants in the meanwhile, let's introduce yourselves. Uh, we would love to know you and from where you are. You can type your names and from which city or state you belong. Thank you very much. You can put the same in the chat box. Ami, wie mache ich das denn jetzt? Geh mal ganz oben. Kannst du Stop Screen machen? Ganz oben. Welcome, Dr. Tejaswini. Ach, 
Ich Welcome weiß, to the live webinar. Das Bildschirm freigeben, aber das tut es nicht. Wenn ich da ja. drauf gehe, da steht freigeben, dann klicke ich und dann kommt. Aber dann mehr ist nicht. Und dann steht hier, warte mal, teilen. Ja, jetzt haben wir dich. Moment. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Genau. Coming. Jetzt haben wir dich. Okay. Genau. So, I try yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your patience, participants. Thank you very much. And a big thank you to everyone who's mentioning that they are from Mumbai, they are from um, Madhya Pradesh, they are from Dharamshala, and from all the places of India and around the globe. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Dr. Roland. Please continue. Can I continue now? Yes, sir. Please continue. Thank you very much. So great. So uh, let's, let's continue. Implantology in the aesthetic zone is one of the big challenges in oral implantology. And uh, I already, already said it is much more than drilling a hole into the bone. We have a high complexity of analysis and planning. And these two points take normally much more time than doing the surgery. Especially in the aesthetic zone, we have only one chance to insert the implant in the three-dimensional positioning correctly. And only the best position guarantees us the long-time success and the best aesthetic result. Inserting the implant in a wrong position can lead to an aesthetic disaster And I will also show you in my lecture such a disaster. This difference of optimal positioning and bad positioning can be one millimeter. So one big message is take your time for the analysis and also for the planning. And co colleagues who think that they can insert implants only with a three-dimensional X-ray and special navigation systems are wrong. I am inserting implants more than 30 years, more than 20 years without any three-dimensional support. When I started with implantology, there was no cone beam, there was no navigation system, there was no augmentation materials or membranes. But the implants were also successful. Look at the panorama X-ray and the case is more than 20 years old. So you can see already at this time, we were working with sinus lifting procedures. We were doing different implant systems. You see on the lower lateral, for example, a blade implant and other types of implants. It's important that you are not afraid to do implants when you have not the possibility of three-dimensional x-rays. Of course, there are cases you must work with three-dimensional support. For example, this is such a case. This patient is a young lady and she lost two implants in the aesthetic zone, both incisures were treated with implants. And you see this disaster after she got the peri-implantitis and she lost their, her implants. So I will show you this case, how we managed it at the end of the lecture. But in this situation that you see such a patient in your clinic, you must know that this is not an easy case. This is an advanced case because you need a big augmentation support and also soft tissue grafting. Without these techniques, you are not able to come to an aesthetic result. Every patient who is coming in our clinic who wants to get implants, we are doing a risk analysis. This means we are analyzing his personal risk factors. We ask him for the medical status. Is he a smoker? What's about his aesthetic expectations? There are big differences of patients. We analyze the lip line. We look for the gingival biotype. 
what's about the shape of tooth crowns? Is there any infection at the implant site? What's about the bone level at the adjacent teeth? One very important point, don't look only to the gap you want to insert the implants, look also to the adjacent teeth and the neighbor teeth, also on the other side of the jaw. What's about the width of the edentulous bone, soft tissue anatomy, and of course the bone anatomy and quality of the alveolar crest. All these factors is very important to come to a long time success. This is a patient who came in our clinic years ago and two years before this patient got the implant in the region 1-1. You can see the exposed edge and the black interdental triangle. And this patient was not happy with this solution. He paid a lot of money and he said, it can't be that after two years, I have such a result. And this patient was correct. There was a mistake the dentist made before. And I want to explain to you which mistake the dentist did. Here you can see another situation. You see a healthy soft tissue. You see a thick soft tissue type, a thick soft tissue biotype. And this gives us the chance, chance to come to a long time success. And this was, must be our aim, the long time success, not only for one or two years. So how can we come to such a long time result? I want to give you in my lecture today, some topics, especially the aesthetic check, then current problems, especially in the positioning of implants in the aesthetic zone, the influence of the gingiva biotypes and shall or should we work in the aesthetic zone with an immediate implantation is it the better way? Is there any difference in relation to delayed implantation? When we are working in the aesthetic zone, it's not only looking in the mouth of the patient, it's also looking in the face of the patient. This is very important because we have to analyze different types of line. There is the eyebrow line, the B pupillar line, the Ali Nazar line, the smile line, the horizontal line, and also the vertical line. And when we are looking in the face of this patient, we see the divergency of the smile line, the axis of the teeth, and also the gingival margin line. And in the case that there are some teeth missing, it is very important. Otherwise, we will not come to an harmonious aesthetic result. <clears throat> Sorry. There is also a pink aesthetic score. It is developed from the University of Wien in Austria, and they analyze the mesial papilla. This is also very important. The papilla and the soft tissue are very important to get a stable result over years. So they analyzed the mesial papilla, the distal papilla, the height of the gingiva contour, the form of the gingiva contour, the form of the jugulum papillae, the surface of the gingiva, and also the color of the gingiva. So you see there are a lot of structures you have to look at before you start with any treatment. This is only the part of analyzing and to look what is the problem, especially in this case. But we must also compare the implant crown, for example, with the natural teeth. And our aim should be that the outlined form of teeth should be aesthetically pleasing. The interdental papilla 
should fill the embrasures completely and to the ideal contact point. What's about the gingival scallop? It should be symmetrical to the contralateral tooth. Never forget to look at the contralateral tooth when you are working in the aesthetic zone. Only this gives you a good result. Scaring is absent in gingival tissues and also discoloration is absent in gingival tissues. When you are working in the aesthetic zone and you can see it here in this case, you see a healthy and thick gingiva and in the aesthetic zone, you should always try to work with aesthetic abutments and this should be ceramic abutments, not with the gray of titanium abutments. This is one of my most important messages I want to give you. The message is you should have minimum, minimum two millimeter thickness of bone around your implant. If you have less than two millimeter bone around your implant, you will not come to a long time success. Of course, it depends from the case, it depends of the patient, but if the, for example, the facial bone wall has less than two millimeter, you will have a problem because of the atrophy of this part of the bone. You have two different types of atrophy. This is on the one hand, the physical, physiological atrophy. This is the normal atrophy every patient ha has. And on the other hand, less nutrition. In the case that the bone wall is too small, for example, one millimeter, you can wait that you lose your bone. And without bone, you will never come to an aesthetic result because the soft tissue is also running away. The soft tissue needs always a stability and the soft tissue needs the stability of bone. So important to know, stability of bone needs minimum two millimeter. This gives the soft tissue stability and this gives the long time success. Let's now look at the implant three dimensional position, a big point, a very important point. And I just gave you the information about the thickness of the bone. We have to differentiate between the danger zone and the comfort zone. And we have to insert our implant not in the danger zone because we lose the bone because of the missing bone wall after years. And in the case that we are doing the implant too far to the palatal, we come to an aesthetic problem. Let's first have a look to the mesiodistal dimension. And here we can see again, we have the danger zone with which is next to the adjacent root surface. So we should avoid always this region. For example, to make it clear, if you have a gap with seven millimeters, you have to analyze two millimeters to the mesial root, two millimeters to the distal root. This means the maximum implant diameter you should choose is three millimeter independent from the facial palatinal bone situation here. So always reduce two millimeter from the medial and two millimeters from the distal situation. What's about the palatal buccal dimension? Here you can see such a situation and also the case I showed you to the beginning there was too less bone at the facial bone side. And this is the result. And you can see again, if you lose the bone, you lose the soft tissue. And it is clear that the patient will lose the implant. It's only a question of time. And of course, this situation is under the aesthetic view horrible. 
What's about the epical coronal dimension? Also, we must analyze this in a comfort zone and in the danger zone. The implant shoulder is about one millimeter apical to the CEG of the contralateral tooth in patients without gingival recession. And the danger zone is entered when the implant is placed too far epically using excessive countersinking or too far coronally, which results in implant shoulder exposure at the mucosa. Both are very bad regarding the aesthetic result. But there are also some cases you have lost two teeth, but you have not enough space to insert two implants. How can you manage such a situation? The best is, for example, if the next teeth are virgin, that you are working with a pontic system. This means you insert one implant in the best positioning and with the pontic system, you are able to come to a nice soft tissue situation. You will never come to such a nice papilla if you would work with two implants in this situation because there would not be enough space for such a result. And I will show you the result with two implants in a slide later. This lecture shall not only show you good cases, I also want to show you bad cases because my opinion is that you learn more from my bad cases than from my nice cases. So what's the problem here? We see on the X-ray the bone loss between the implants. And I already told you, if you have no, loan, no bone, you lose the soft tissue. And this is the situation I had here. I lost the, two, the bone between the two implants. And you can see it in the clinical situation that the inter-implant papilla is two millimeter shorter than the adjacent papilla. Of course, I was able to, to realize an aesthetic result by doing the prosthetics, but I compensated this in this way. But this is not a long time stable process because we will see after years that the bone is more and more going away. So this is important to understand without bone, no stable soft tissue situation. And at the beginning of my lecture, I spoke about the medical status of the patient. This is also a very important point you have to analyze before you start with your treatment. A lot of patients' medical status is not very good and they have problems and they have, you have to ask them for the problems they have. For example, what's about an uncontrolled diabetes mellitus? What's about immunologic disease? This patient, for example, had a biphosphonate therapy over years because she had a mammar carcinoma. We show you in the GCSI program all these cases and how you can manage it. What's about a a patient who has osteoporosis. Can we do implants in the jaw of these patients? We will analyze the situations and give you support regarding all these questions. Another big point is the oral hygiene. Patients who are not able or don't want to have a good oral hygiene are not our patients for implants. So this is also a take home message. Forget the people who have the money, but have a bad oral hygiene. You will not be successful with implants by these patients. Let's have a look here. You see two implants were inserted. And again, and this is the reason of stability. You see, we have a healthy and thick soft tissue. This gives us the stability we need for a long time success. 
And why we have the separability of the soft tissue, you can see it in the X-ray. We have also stability in the bone. Please first look only to the left side. First of all, when you see the situation, you would say, oh, it's not looking bad. But this again is an aesthetic compromise. And we can see it on the right side of the slide. We see that we have a very short inter-implant papilla. And again, why do we have this short inter-implant papilla? We lost the bone. And this is the problem for the patient. And finally, the problem for the surgeon and the dentist that we will have always infection in this small gap because most of the patient are not able and are not and don't want to clean this region very correctly. So this is a bad situation for long time success. It could be the better, better way here to work only with one implant and to make the pontic prosthetic like I showed you in the slides before. The iatrogenic factors, the factors the doctor uh, is uh, doing are, for example, the following mistakes, a wrong or inappropriate positioning, the improper implant selection, for example, when we are choosing an implant diameter, which is too far. The relationship implant and proposed restoration and the improper positioning of the implant shoulder. And we will speak about this again. You see the case again, I showed to you. I, you remember I told you here, the facial bone run, bone, uh, run away the soft tissue run away. But the second problem was that the diameter of this implant was too far. There was a time ago, 10 years, I think, that the industry told us use by diameter implants because the outcome out of the bone, out of the soft tissue for the prosthetics is much better than using a smaller diameter. But this is completely wrong, forget it. The most important thing, and I tell it to you again, I am not tired to tell it again and again, is that you have enough bone around your implant. It's much more important to have bone around the implant than the diameter is 0 0.5 millimeter bigger. So normally, the diameter of implants in the aesthetic zone should not be more than 3.8 millimeter. It is not possible, it is not necessary to work with diameters more than four millimeters. I already spoke about the soft tissue and when we are speaking about the soft tissue, we are speaking about the periodontal biotypes we have to differentiate between thick and flat and thin and scalloped. And you already have heard about it. We differentiate different gangliva types, the morphotype A and the morphotype B. The morphotype A is about 79% of the gingiva. And the problem of the morphotype a is that the gingiva thickness is less than one millimeter. And this gives us a big problem because the risk to get recession in this gingiva biotype is much higher in relationship, in relationship to the morphotype B. There you have a thickness of more than 1.3 millimeters. This gives us a big problem in a lot of cases, but we have also the possibility to work with soft tissue grafts. And this is one possibility to stability, to stability, to stable the soft tissue regarding the papillar and the outcome of the crown.
The other question I want to discuss is what's about one stage or two stage surgery? The most important structure, if you want to decide to work with a one stage or two stage surgery is the facial bone wall. And if the facial plate is intact, yes, we have the possibility to come in the same, uh, in the same situation to inserting the implants and maybe regarding from the occlusion, for example, we can also work with a provisional restoration. So if the facial plate is intact, the risk is reduced to lose the implant if we insert, if we insert the implant directly. But in the case that the facial plate is defect, we must work with a socket bone grafting and wait before we insert the implant. It's not good to combine it. So wait before you insert the implant and make the provisional restoration. And in the case that the facial place is completely missing, you have to work with big bone repair techniques. And after this, you can do the implants. So now I come back to the patient I showed to you at the beginning of my lecture, maybe you remember. And this was the patient who lost two implants in the incisional region. And you see the big bone defect, you see the big soft tissue defect. And you see also other problems. Our aim must see set the bone high to the desired interdental maximum. Only this gives us the chance to come to an aesthetic result. And coming back to the lines, you remember I told you, you have to analyze the situation by looking to the horizontal line. And you see on the left side of the patient's left side, there is something missing. And what's about the vertical situation? Where do I insert my implant correctly? What is the best positioning? This should be the best positioning here in this case. But now you can see there is a lot of bone missing. And you can also see, maybe you remember, we want to change the soft tissue situation because on the other side, on the left side, we see that there is a completely other soft tissue situation at the lateral incision. And we also try to copy this on the right side. So we see the lines, we see the changing we must do of the soft tissue on the right side. And we can also see that we have to elongate the lateral incisure on the left side to come to a harmonious gingival and prosthetic rehabilitation. So this is with bone, with gum, the lines, our aim. Again, set the bone high to the desired interdental maximum. And we can't come to this result by working with normal augmentation material. This, don't, this isn't stable and normally you are not able to augment the vertical dimension for a long time. You will always lose your bone. And this would come again to a aesthetical disaster. Now let's have a look to the clinical situation. The patient came with this, it's a young patient, it's a female, this patient came with a provisional restoration, a removable prosthesis. And you see here on the right side, the situation, we must work with bone augmentation, with block augmentation. And again, I want to show you the mistake I did. You see the screw to fix the bone augmentation. And this is exactly in the positioning I need the bone. I put the screw on the wrong positioning. There is, this is not the correct place. So when I screw out this bone screw, I have a hole exactly in the positioning I need for my papilla. 
And you remember, I told you, if you have no stable bone, you will lose the papilla. And this was wrong. Never do it in, its, in the way I did. So this is the occlusion. This is the situation you see. This is also a very difficult situation to stabilize the implants. On the right side, you see after reopening, after the bone augmentation, it is looking nice. And we inserted the implants. You can see it on the lower slide. Here, the situation after reopening again, you see the gingiva bio, as you see the gingiva formos to come to an aesthetic result. After this, we were working with ceramic abutments to form our soft tissue. And first of all, we also worked with provisional crowns to come to a stable result. In such cases, you should work with provisional crowns about four months before you shall go, should go to the final restoration. Here you can see the situation directly after I put the crowns on the abutments and you see the white color of the gingival and you can see this is uh, directly after inserting the uh, ceramic abutments into the implants. And you can see again, this is a stable situation also in the bone, the X-ray shows us a good situation in the bone directly after the positioning of the crowns. And now let's have the look to the situation after two, four and six years. The clinical situation is still looking nice. You see our result, we don't see any exposed Edge, you see any, you don't see any black triangle, you see a stable and healthy soft tissue situation. Although, and now please look to the X-ray, you see that at the bone side, we can see uh, atrophy around the implants. This is another topic and I would give uh, these messages to you why we see this and how we can manage such a situation when you are doing the GCS cross, Coming to the young lady, you see this was the situation. The lady started in our clinic and this is the situation the lady finished our treatment. Let's summarize a little bit the lecture. The analyzing and the planning are the most important things before you start your treatment. Take your time for these two points, otherwise you will not be lucky and you will not come to a long time success. Discuss these cases also with your colleagues. This is a good support to support each other by planning and analyzing the situation. This helps us all the time to be successful. Of course, we must come to an optimum implant positioning. Never forget the two millimeter bone around the implants and immediate, immediate or delayed implantation. In most of the cases, there is no need to work with an immediate implantation in the aesthetic zone, in the aesthetic zone, no need. But if you want to do it, the researchers say us that in the case that the facial plate is stable, the results will be on the same level in both immediate and delayed. One big point for the success is the gingiva biotype. It's much better to have a thick gingiva biotype than a thin because the situation is much more stable. To make it easy, if you have no bone, you will have no papilla, and without papilla, you will have no aesthetics. I say, Apka Dian Keli Banyawat. My daughter is studying 
Indian culture and Indian languages. She already learned Tamil and now she is learning Hindi. And I hope that this was correct. And thank you very much for giving me your time. Thank you very much, Dr. Rollin. Thank you very much for the lovely Hindi line that you uh, gave us. We definitely had a pleasure having you for the webinar. Also, thank you very much for the lovely and interactive session. I'm getting an overflow of thank you messages from the present, uh, from the participants, which meant your presentation was really lovely. I request you to kindly stop your screen share for a while. Please stop your screen share. Friends, you have about two minutes to note down each and every question. You can ask your questions to the stalwarts of implant dentistry from Germany and from India. All your questions will be answered in the next two minutes. In the meanwhile, I'd like to tell you about the upcoming webinar. Our upcoming webinar would be held tomorrow on the topic, how to choose the right implant system. I request you all to kindly register for the webinar. You can find the link to the webinar in the chat box. The webinar would be held on the topic, how to choose the right implant system. Thank you very much. Panel, I guess we are ready to start with the live question and answer session. Yeah, starting with, proceed. thank you very much, sir. Thanks, starting with the first question, a question to Dr. Sanjay. When yeah. should we start clinical practice and what prophylaxis is needed for us once we plan to start? See, uh, don't dare to start before the lockdown gets over. You never know uh, what is the status around you, what kind of patients you have in your city and in which zone you are especially. If you are in a red zone and contaminated zone, better to stay back at home. Green zone people, yeah, they might start, but with all due precautions, as you all must be knowing that Supreme Court has passed a guideline that not to use uh, aerosol generating instruments till 30th of May. So anyways, till 30th of May, you have just have to do OPD and emergency procedures if there's any. And precautions regarding precautions, yes, if you're doing working in this period, you have to take all the precautions which I mentioned you and uh, don't work without uh, protections. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Moving to the next question, question from Dr. Manasi to Dr. Rowland. How is the stability related to depth for implant location? Sorry? How is the stability related to the depth of implant location? I don't understand the question. Sure, sure, sir. Sure, uh, sir. Maybe, maybe I could repeat it once again. How is the stability related to the depth of implant location? The depth of implant location. Implant, implant, dental implant location. Ah, okay. Uh, please, can you repeat the question again? Because the line is not good, I have here in my home. Uh, Ruben, uh, let me try to, to put it in. He's asking about the stability. Is it, uh, is it important concerning the depth location? How deep you go? Is it important for the stability? Absolutely, yes. Thank you very much, sir. Most welcome. The stability of the implant in the bone is always one of the most important uh, things in oral implantology. If you, have, if you are not able to have a high stability of your implant, or it's the same is with the augmentation material, you will have a problem because we need the stability for the blood supply, we need the stability for the osseointegration, and otherwise we will have a problem. We will lose the bone and after this, it can be that we also lose the implant. So it depends not from the location of the aesthetic zone, for example, it depends all over uh, the jaws in the upper and in the lower jaw. Thank you very much, sir. Moving to the next question. Question from Dr. Divit from Mumbai, India. A question to Dr. Rami. Is prosthetics covered in the implant logic course? Yes, of course, the prosthetic is one of the main topics in the implant course. We said there are five, six modules. Uh, first is the diagnosis, then we have the X-ray, then we have soft tissue, then we have hard tissue, and then we have prosthodontics. So prosthodontics alone is one major module, and it will be also mentioned in soft tissue and hard tissue. So it is one of the components, yes. 
Thank you very much, sir. Moving to the next question. Question from Dr. Jaimin to Dr. Vipin. Can you please give a detailed insight on the Indian Academy that you mentioned? Also, which centers would the courses be held in India? Are the courses held in Mumbai and Delhi? Thank you. Hi. Recently, we are starting courses in Maharashtra at three centers simultaneously. First of all, in Nagpur at Kingsway Hospital. Second one is at Fortis Hospital, Mumbai, Bashi. And third one is at Aurangabad. Uh, tentatively, we are planning to start the courses in month of Jan. We are planning for at least 20 participants in a batch. Uh, for it, the course will exist for next six months. Uh, and prizes will be issued by the uh, Dr. Sanjay at the end of this session. Anything more you want to ask? No, sir. That's it. Thank you very uh, much, sir. Uh, one, one second. Uh, I'll just come in in this case. In Delhi, yes, we are working out uh, for the courses very soon. We'll update you regarding the Delhi uh, module, like where we are going to study. It will be in Gurgaon, not in Delhi. So just stay tuned with us. We'll just update you regarding the same. Thank you very much, sir. Moving to the next question. Question for Dr. Roland. What is the chance of an implant failure or peri-implantitis in augmented bone when compared to a normal bone? Yes, we have a lot of, of researches regarding this point. And the researchers say that it doesn't depend if the bone is augmented or if the bone is not augmented. So we can work with augmentation material and also with autologous bone. Of course, the autologous bone is the gold standard. And we can also mix it, autologous bone with augmentation material. The most important thing is that you can insert the implant also in the, in the combination of, auto, of, of original bone uh, with, uh, with augmentation material and so will also be successful. But important is the stability of the implant. If the stability is less you will lose the implant because of the soft tissue which is growing along the implant. And this gives not us the chance to come to the osseointegration, to come to the contact osteogeny. Thank you very much, sir. Moving to the next question. This is a general question. Anyone from the panel can answer. Will I be able to practice dentistry in Germany after I am awarded with the certificate from the course? Let me can answer this. Yes, I can answer you. Look, um, the certificate, we have to differentiate between two different things, which is a qualification and a dental license. Dental license, uh, it's not only in Germany like this, it's also in the States, it's in the Gulf region, everything. You have to get a dental license to practice dentistry in general whether it is general dentistry or implantology. So the certificate is another pathway. It will give you the knowledge. It will give you the science. It will add to your CV. But still, if you want to practice in Germany, you have to do the license steps, which are different steps. You can read about it concerning having the German language, having the experience, having a general examination. Done. Of course, if you have the, if you have the certificate, it can help you, but it is not a dental license. Doctor, Thank you, you want to add something? Dr. Hille, Dr. Ronald, sir, you want to add? This is absolutely uh, correct, uh, Dr. Rami told us. Thank you very much, sir. Moving to the next question. Is this just a basic implantology course that you've mentioned, or would this cover each and every every aspect of implantology? This is not only, this is not only a basic course, it's advanced modules also we had uh, taken care for these courses. The first module will be the basic one for the beginners. Uh, the second, th second for two, four, uh, next fourth will be an advanced one. Uh, it will cover almost all the heart tissue, soft tissue augmentations, uh, sinus lift procedures, all the major procedures like uh, uh, infialural nerve repositioning, uh, various GBR techniques, and also the some newer techniques and the uh, use of uh, guided surgeries also will be taken care. Also, we are planning for some navigation surgeries, which will take care by Dr. Ida and Ryan. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, one, one more thing to add in this. Uh, we'll also be providing the patients to the participants, right, for the basic implants. But then if any participant has his own patient, 
who wants to get it done, like a GBR process or a sinus lift, they can get their own patients and we can guide them. We'll help them. Uh, if I can add something, uh, Dr. Sanjay, if you allow. Of course, um, it is not a totally basic course, of course, but uh, as I told you before, implantology is a learning process. So you have to start with the basics. This we give, of course, and we are, of course, giving the advanced techniques like sinus lifting, like augmentation, uh, nerve lateralization. These topics will be studied, but this um, I always try to say it many, several times. Please keep in mind that when you start to put implants, you start with the simple cases, straightforward cases. You will have the knowledge of doing a sinus lift, but when to do it, this is another question. But the course will cover these topics too. I want to add something more. For all the postgraduates, daily, uh, participants who, are, we will, who will enroll for these courses, we'll give a free one-year mentorship for them uh, with a minimum cost for that to all the participants. Right? Thank you very much, sir. I hope the question was answered satisfactorily. Moving on to the next question, question to Dr. Roland. Is it necessary to use surgical guides during implants insertion at aesthetic zone? When I started with implantology, I said 30 years ago, there was no analyzing like we are doing it today. This is like Dr. Rami said, this is a development. Today, we are working with much more details than we did years before. But we started at this time with two-dimensional X-rays, with two-dimensional uh, uh, analysis systems. And uh, we will also show this easy, easy analyze uh, possibilities, analyzing possibilities in the GCSI course. Important is that you have an, uh, an uh, imagination uh, how you should uh, shoot the situation, how you, which outlook you want to have after your treatment. This is important. And of course, I was working very easy with easy templates. I put the teeth, the normal uh, acryl teeth in this positioning and I was looking how I can manage it, but the templates we are finding today, three-dimensional templates uh, after navigation, uh, these I didn't have at the start of my treatment with implants. Thank you very much, sir. Moving to the next question. Once again, a question to Dr. Roland. In the last case, where the two central incisors were replaced with two single unit of implants and ceramic abutments, what was done to manage the difference of the positions of the marginal gingival papilla to the contralateral tooth? Yes. This was a very complicated uh, case. And you can imagine uh, the patient got a lot of uh, surgery. But one of the surgery was also to work with uh, soft tissue grafting procedures. But uh, this is a long way for the patient to come to such a result. Yeah. And uh, we must know, and also the patient must know this before we start such a treatment. But there was no other chance for the rehabilitation. Of course, we could have done a classical bridge, but also with the classical bridge, we would have had the problem of the missing bone, the missing soft tissue. So we needed, we needed the support in the region, and this was the situation to, uh, to discuss this the patient, shall we do implants or shall we do the clinical, the classical uh, bridge as a fixed prosthesis? She wanted to do and to go this way with us, and she did it, and we did it, and I think finally the result was okay. Thank you very much, sir. Moving to the next question, a question from an anonymous attendee. Would the course also cover basal implantology and immediate functional loading implantology? Thank you. Uh, no, it will be purely a conventional implantology course. Okay, basal implants will not be covered. But yes, immediate loading protocols will be taught. You can load it immediately with conventional implants also. It's not necessary that you should have basal implants always to load it immediately. So we'll focus on conventional implantology. 
and we'll teach you immediate loading. No, not an issue with that. Thank you very much, sir. Moving to the next question, question from Dr. Akanksha. This is a question to Dr. Roland. How to select shoulder of the implant? Please specify. Yes, the shoulder of the implant uh, is a very big topic and you can speak a lot about this. Important is that you analyze the CEG of the neighbor of the neighbor tool. And uh, this is uh, your, your point you have to analyze. And in this region, you should also uh, insert the implant. If you insert the implant too deep, you will have the problem that you lose bone and the results will not be aesthetical. And if you put the implant too, uh, the, the implant uh, column too high, there will be the implant, for example, the gray shadow of titanium coming out of the soft tissue. And this is also looking very, uh, very bad, not aesthetically. So the main point you have to analyze is the CEG and to go about one millimeter under the CEG of the neighbor tube. Thank you very much, sir. Moving to the next question. What is the protocol for selecting different graft materials? When to select xenograft, allograft, alloplast? <laughs> Yes. Yes. <laughs> Seminar in itself. Of course, one of us can tell you another different, um, different protocol. But uh, I give you my protocol. My protocol is the best, uh, the, the, the best uh, grafting material is autograft. Okay. Is autograft. And um, I think um, the first layer you put on the implant surface should be an autograft. It means autograft or human derived grafts. That means uh, a different graft from another person, which you have in a data bank. And then you can put a second layer of alloplastic material. But this is my opinion. Don't put alloplastic material, tricalcium phosphate, on a direct implant surface. Put better a xenograft or an autologous graft. This is my concept. Now, I don't know in, um, with what Dr. Vipin de Heening and what Dr. Sanjay do and Dr. Roland, but this, is, this would be my protocol. Uh, this depends on according to the defect of the uh, where you are placing your implant. Uh, when there is an open defect or the unfavorable defect, you have to go for some xenograft which is absorbed very slowly. And when you have a closed defect, you can go for, uh, for an autograft or some uh, yes. allografts. So uh, when, you have, when you want your graft to be absorbed so early, go for a uh, closed defect. But uh, in case of open defects or unfavorable defect, always go for the uh, xenograft or synthetic material. And you can use a sandwich technique, what Sarah has told. We prefer yes. auto autograph. We also prefer an autograph. So you can use an autograph as a first layer and the uh, non dissolving uh, grafts as a second layer. And then the, use a membrane for, uh, to uh, stabilize the graft. Uh, after every case of your graft, grafting materials, you have to stabilize it with a GBR membrane. It's mandatory for all, all the open cases and few of the closed defects. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. Moving to the next question, a question to Dr. Rami. Can you please specify the price of the course in Indian rupees and how many implants will we be placing on the patients by the end of the course? Thank you. I think this question should be answered by Dr. Asnani. He is the one responsible for the financial part and the course in India and the practical part would be done uh, in India too. Thank you, sir. Over to you, Dr. Yeah. Sanjay. Thank you, Dr. Rami. Yeah. See, regarding the course fees, it is, uh, uh, we are keeping it at 3 lakh rupees, Indian rupees, uh, which doesn't include your travel to Germany and accommodation in Germany. Okay. This includes all the modules and uh, the, uh, the, pre uh, the learning part. Uh, you will be getting at least uh, two patients uh, uh, for placing your implants. As I said earlier, if you have uh, your own, you can get your own patients. Uh, you can treat them under our guidance or whoever, like, your mentors, uh, you can treat them under them. Uh, but then for today, like uh, as we are launching this academy, we have an offer for participants who are going to who can book uh, before the lockdown gets over. Uh, they can book with 10,000 rupees and uh, we will be giving them a, a premium surgical kit and two implants free if they register during this lockdown. So this offer is exclusively for a dentist channel online uh, participants and their friends. Like not an issue if anybody can come and 
registered with this with this offer. But before lockdown, after lockdown, it will be around say three lakh rupees. Thank you very Thank much, you sir. Very Friends, I'm sure you would definitely want to make the best benefit from this offer. Moving to the next question. Question to Dr. Hile. Greetings, sir. Thank you for the lovely presentation. It was really nice. Can we use Botox refills to counter formation of black triangles between two implants in aesthetics region? Can you suggest some other methods to tackle black triangles around dental implants? Yes, this was well. This should be the message of of my presentation. The most important point is that you insert the implants in the best bone positioning. And for this, you need the uh, planning and the analyzing. And in the case that you have found this position exact, you will have also the chance to come to an excellent soft tissue situation. And the soft tissue situation depends again from the bone situation. If the bone is not correct, and if the bone is not on the best positioning, also the soft tissue will not be for a long time on the best positioning. The papilla will not be stable. And without any stability of the papilla, you will never come to an excellent aesthetical result. So the positioning of the implant in combination with the bone around the implants leads us to a excellent soft tissue situation. But always, and this is important, look to the other teeth because this leads to an aesthetical, this leads to a harmonious gingival margin and to an excellent result. Thank if you, very, can, thank you can, very much. Something, uh, Ruben, uh, concerning the, the Botox, okay? The Botox to fill it with Botox was his question too. The problem with Botox is it is only a transient solution, okay? It is not a permanent solution. And it is up till now in the researches, it is um, not controllable. You don't know the outcome you get when you inject Botox. It could be still less or be more. So up till now, it is not uh, as an approved uh, measure to be used. It's the same with hyaluron. Uh, Acid, uh, yes. It's the same. It's not stable over a long time. So this should not be your first choice. Your first choice should be to come by your treatment, by your planning to a stable soft tissue situation. Thank you very much, sir. Moving to the next question. Question for Dr. Rami. Can you please mention about the grading system in the exam and the criteria for the exam? Okay, uh, the grading system. The, uh, first of all, the exam will be a written and an oral exam. The written exam uh, will be MCQ questions, multiple choice questions, around 100 questions. Okay. In order to pass, you have to get 65%. It means 65 up to 70%. We did not decide it yet. 65 to 70% of MC, uh, uh, MCQ questions. Um, the questions uh, will be all mentioned during the course. That means you will not have any questions which are um, like um, uh, expecting something you don't, you didn't take. Okay. The second thing is the oral part will be uh, not only questions but also discussion about the cases you made. That means it is more like um, a meeting and a discussion of cases you have made, what the problems you have uh, found, how you solved it. In addition, of course, to see that you got the basic knowledge of implantology. It must not be a profound knowledge, but the basics must be there. For example, types of bone, types of crafting, uh, solutions, different solutions in problems, the, the basics in aesthetics, for example, Dr. Healy said today, these are basic impl implantology guidelines you have to know. Uh, Rami, I want to add something for us. You have to submit the case record of cases we had, you had done during your this, uh, modules. And also a small uh, topic will be given to you as a dissertation. Like, uh, not exactly dissertation, but a small research topic will, which you have to submit prior to your exam, like during the fifth module. So it will help the post graduates for their future. Thank you very much, sir. 
moving to the moving to the next question question from dr nikhil obviously the course would be after the end of the lockdown can you please tell me when is the date of the enrollment and how many students are there in a batch you can enroll from today also with 10000 rupees as an this booking amount and uh, generally we are planning to start the course in the month of jan along with the iso uh, so can you please be loud and can you please repeat the same uh, we are uh, you can register from today also you can start registry you can start registration and course will be a tentatively in the month of january uh, it will be along the national conference of iso tentatively thank you very much sir moving to the next question sir as you know in a course conventional implantology is not sufficient would you also give an insight on zygoma pterygoid implants zygoma and pterygoid implants see uh, uh atrophic uh, covering the topic it's a totally different topic you know at uh, restoration of uh, rehabilitation of atrophic maxilla and uh, but we will be providing an insight but not live patients and uh, surgeries but yes theoretical part we will be covering if possible if not i am not assuring right now if possible we can have a hands on if time permits because already we have a lot of topics to be uh, covered in these six modules so let's see but um, an insight will be given like basic uh, protocols will be uh, will be told thank you very much so moving to the next question so once again a very common question if you could once again clarify it would be very nice what is the course fee as i told it will be 3 lakh rupees but if anybody wants to register during this lockdown period he or she can register by by paying rupees 10000 the offer for now is like we will be providing with a premium surgical implant kit and two implants to the participants who register during this lockdown so and friends again and that amount has to be paid in installments it's not a one stroke uh, payment you can pay in three installments thank you very much friends as dr sanjay asnani has mentioned you can pay the fees in three installments thank you very much moving to the next question question from an anonymous attendee do xenograft do any good if directly placed over titanium surface we are placing the xenograft over in the sinus procedures on the titanium surface and we are getting a good results so no issue with xenografts we are using biowork as xenograft I, i don't find any issues from last five to seven years it's a get osteo integrated anything more thank you very much sir i think this is the last question for the session question from dr prasad during vertical augmentation what kind of soft tissue grafting is to be done it, it depends how much how how high your vertical augmentation is if it is uh, enough that you make a scoring of the ginger of the um, flap and cover it fine and good if you use a membrane which you have to use anyway it will be fine too in vertical augmentation the problem is that you have a deficient soft tissue in this you will have to put a soft tissue graft soft tissue graft taken palatally and you have to add it to the graft thank you very much moving to the next question question from dr mansi to dr rollin does the selection of implant also depends on the gingival biotype pertaining to different cases it depends from uh, it depends in the first line from the bone quality and the bone quantity these are very important structures the other point is how uh, how many soft tissue uh, i have uh, and in which quality is this soft tissue so the soft tissue in combination with the bone again gives us the stability we want to have thank you very much sir thank you for answering to the question a question for dr sanjay yeah. if we re- if we register after the lockdown for the course will it not include the surgical kit and the implants uh, no this offer is exclusively for the lockdown period and the amount is very minimal 10000 rupees but the benefits like it's the kit is everybody knows in a standard kit may cost around 40 50000 rupees plus two implants so uh, it's a heavy discount Thank you very much, sir. Last yes, question uh, for the live webinar session. Yeah, Doctor Eli wants to say something. Ruben, may I ask something? Please, please. Yes, Doctor Eli. Anybody want was saying want, something? I guess. Yeah, I want to add something. Uh, yeah. See, this implant academy I, is fully supported by few companies during lockdown period, like Austin and BioLife. We are already as an 
conversation with them so they are planning to provide us with the kits but uh, it the registration should be during the lockdown only after that they are not providing us with the kits the issue is it is not with our academy the our sponsors are not able to give after lockdown so kindly please register for the academy as early as possible till 18th of may thank you thank you sir last question from the live question and answer session a question to dr rollin thank you for the brilliant presentation and the case reports here are two questions that dr somi gupta has in case of short inter implant papillary position when compared to the adjacent tooth it was compensated by prosthesis you said it's not a long term solution was any follow up on any other treatment done in this case no it was not done the problem was that i lost the bone between the implants at the time when the implant were without loading in the in the bone so we uh, were very, we were working in two with two stage surgery and uh, i saw this after three months four months that i lost the bone between the implants and i spoke to the patient and uh, i said we can try to augment and we did it but it was again not stable and again i lost the the bone after the augmentation and uh, then i discussed the problem with the patient again and i said we have two chances or two possibilities first is to to explant but uh, this would also be a very bad situation so this is not a good situation <coughs> not a good solution and the other point was to say how can we manage the situation and she knows that this is a compensation of missing bone uh, he is uh, content with the aesthetic result but i informed him that i am not happy with the situation and that i think that over years here will be a problem i saw no other chances than i told you now thank you so I'm sorry. There's one more question, and I would want you to answer this. What is the ideal time of implant placement after radiotherapy? This is a very difficult question. Radiotherapy, where, when, for example, when I uh, do implants in the mouth of the patient, and the patient got a radiotherapy in other regions. Uh, this is a completely other situation than when he got radiotherapy in the mouth so we have to differentiate it and this is not our decision this is the decision we have to uh, speak with his physician and to analyze the situation to discuss to speak to the patient to ask if it is necessary to work with surgical procedures at this time in this region so it's not so easy to say yes after four weeks after four months or after two years we must always know that is a big problem of necrosis because the nutrition is very bad and where we have no nutrition we have no osseo integration i can Thank you, give, i can give a clinical tip for that if you have a radiation patient after one year just do one thing you take a pilot drill no or you some anesthesia and take a pilot drill pilot drill put in the bone If the there is a oozing from that area, you find something there, some oozing from the area, blood oozing. So if your bone is viable, and you can plan for uh, implant placement with the physician concern. What I feel. Thank you very much, sir. For integration, you need them. Yeah. Thank you very much. So, uh, friends, with that, we come to an end of the lovely question and answer session. On behalf of Team Dentist Channel dot online, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Dr. Rami, Dr. Rollin, Dr. Vipin, and Dr. Sanjay Asnani for officially inaugurating and for officially uh, giving us an insight on the lovely uh, academy that you would be soon taking up with the lectures and for the implantology course. Friends, uh, a, so a complete brochure would be sent to you on your registered email. and as dr sanjay asnani has already said if you register for the course before the lockdown ends before the lockdown ends you stand a chance to win and to get a complete uh, implant kit as well as two implants please do register for this lovely course i'm sure this course would have a fun learning experience packed with a lot of science and lot of art of anything and everything which is pertaining to oral implantology a certificate of participation would be issued to you for attending this live webinar Thank you so much for your patience. 
please do subscribe to you uh, to dentist channel press on the bell icon and to get notified on further updates and for the upcoming webinars thank you very much friends may you all have a good day thank you robin thank you for giving us an opportunity thanks a lot thank you very much thank you very much for your hosting very thank you thank you robin very nicely that was great thank you very much sir have a good day bye